You shall not succeed, Mando. Especially since I still possess this. Let's do this. What the hell? This is definitely not the way. What the hell indeed. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Bandai SH Figuarts Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2 Din Djarin. Round 3 fight. Now if you go back to my previous reviews of the Mandalorians we've gotten from SH Figuarts, I think it was the first one I didn't like too much. Then we got the Beskar version and it was a little better. It's still not my favorite. I liked it better once I gave it the custom neck peg, get that helmet off the shoulders a little bit. I'm hoping the same thing happens here. This is our first official season two Mandalorian, so I had to get it, even though it's really only a, a thigh piece of armor and then a knee pad. But that Grogu looks better too, and an unmasked head. So I'm a sucker, shut up. Looking at the package, it's what we're used to with the glare from this light getting over there. It's what we're used to from SH Figure Arts. There's the metallic trim, making it all fancy. On the side, pretty promotional shot. On the back, more pretty promotional shots showing you what you get, the accessories, what this thing can do. Warning, choking hazards, small parts. Don't put toys in your mouth. On the side, Star Wars The Mandalorian, some more fancy trim, unpiratable hologram sticker. On the top, same words, different order. On bottom, UPC, SH Figure Arts, Legalese, your winning lottery numbers. Let's get this open, see what's going on here. Single piece of tape between me and toy. Well, okay, there's also this flap and this tray. Is that separate? Yes, it is. Doesn't make a very nice backdrop for the figure itself, but nice image instructions hands swappable head at the neck do not misplace these teeny tiny things that'll fall in the carpet and be lost forever or this thing god dang it plug the jetpack in the back plug the alternate boosters with the flame effect the good thing about season two he didn't use his rifle much did he or well you know maybe he had it for a while and then lost it hold the rifle hold the spear switch out the rocket and the whistling birds the spear goes on the back swapping out holsters we'll see how this is this time around and then grogu options i think i lost this the first time around on well on one of the previous mandalorians if i'm using tweezers you know it's tiny <laughs> so what i do i put it right on the table instead of keeping it in here i was about to yank on the torso to remove this plastic piece but then i realized the bandolier goes from the lower torso and attaches at the shoulder so let's see oh okay Oh, hmm. now if you have the previous SH Figure Arts Mandalorian, you know what you're getting into with the new one. A lot of the parts are reused, which we don't see as often. We should have known would be reused because this knee pad, or well, the pants, the knee part, a separate piece plugged on top of the actual knee piece. So it was destined to get swapped with a Mandalorian top knee pad. The right thigh is new. It's got this oddball armor piece. I think this one did come with a swappable shoulder pad that had the mud horn on it. I couldn't get it to stay on there. This one comes with that as a default. Same belt visually, but with the new one, they made the grenades removable, which we'll look at here in a minute. Same thing with the bandolier going up and over, but the new one is rough right here. Look how crisp and clean this one is. This one looks like it got smashed at the factory. Torso armor, very similar, but different. Notice this kind of gap ridge. This one just has the seam line. And then the helmets. On this one, I have put the John Walker Customs extended neck bar in just to raise it up a bit. I feel like it fixes the proportions. On the new one, the visor is wider. It gives it the appearance that the helmet is slightly larger. Size-wise, I don't think it is. And then they tweak the ridge going up over the top. On the previous one, it's got kind of a double kick. It has an edge and then another edge. On the new one, it's a single ridge. There's no extra detail running up the middle. Otherwise, it's most of the same parts in different colors, or well, really different shades of the same colors. Like at the boot here, I like this orangey highlight and that fades to a darker brown at the edge. This was just brown, kind of the same thing at the boots. But then detail work doesn't seem as clean. You can see that they just tossed silver at this and got the silver in between and everything over here it looks like actual cartridges and i am damn surprised this rifle stayed on his back that whole time i mean they even kept the swappable piece even though this release has nothing to go here so you can take the accessories from that other one and put it on the new one too like i said the visor being slightly larger it does help a little bit but you still get that small head feeling and i think that's accentuated by the size of these feet. You know what they say about big feet, right? You gotta buy a bigger boot. I do have another one of those neck pegs. I am gonna try this later in the video. This cape is thick and flat. 
it doesn't have a lot of life to it and I'm afraid once we get the jetpack on it's gonna get kind of crazy when you try to put it off to the side. Maybe I can wet it down, let it dry in a position or something. Also, we run into the bodysuit looking a little bit plain. Because of the shininess of the armor bits, there's a lot of light reflecting. It makes it look shadowy and kind of realistic. But then you get to the parts that are actually cloth well, on you know, the actual Mandalorian doesn't have a wash. There's no extra paint there. Like the first two versions, I'd like to see a little bit of dirtiness. It's just, I don't know, SH Figure Arts has taken this more animated feel, this turn at some point. Saying that, I'm liking this so far. I haven't got into the accessories yet, but as an action figure, just standing here. Hmm, yeah, yeah. Articulation wise, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball down at the bottom. Can look up and I look down about as much as a dude wearing a helmet like this can. It's either a dumbbell joint or a pin going back into a butterfly joint but you can see the cap of it right there. It goes back, goes forward. Nope, it is a dumbbell joint. There's some up and down too. So that's just a floating cap to kind of hide the articulation in certain spots all around. You can also rotate on that pin. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to about right there. Shoulder pad itself is on a double hinge. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up to about right there. Swivel hinge, swivel at the wrist. We have it in that position right now, but you can take it, rotate it, go side to side, wherever you want to go. There is a dumbbell joint at the mid torso that's a bit restricted by this bandolier, but most of the movement comes from the ball joint at the waist. Not a lot of crunch. Some arc back tilt, some tilt, a bit of rotation. Holster has a hinge and then these hip pads also hinge up out of the way. Hinge and swivel at the hip. There's also this floating piece that kind of hides it. It goes up into it as you rotate up to here. There's also a drop down to the leg and with that it gets this out of the way of the crotch piece and comes up just a bit further back out not bad at all rotates on that big hunk and drop down then pushes back up double knee comes up to almost but still impressive swivel hinge swivel at the ankle too goes back goes forward rotation this way and then a forward facing pin for some rocker toe joint for accessories there's several sets of hands there's two fists see how easy those are to pop off oh not bad at all what about putting other ones on a little tight. There's two splayed out hands, two relaxed hands. There's a trigger finger hand for a small grip. Then there's the trigger finger hand for the rifle. Notice the kick back and a weapon weight holding hand. And then two Beskar spear holding hands. With weapons, we're gonna go with the rifle first because this has not had a great track record. And honestly, as good as this looks with the golds and the silvers and the gun metals and the browns and the blacks, it just seems over-engineered. I have to break this loose in order to get it in his hand. Maybe there was some other kind of trick. And there, I don't mind. Again, this looks great, but as soon as you want to put it on his back, it becomes a pain in the ass. Because you have to remove this piece and hope to all that is holy that you don't lose it. Well, first I gotta get it out of there. Yeah, and then you take this piece off, although this also comes off too. I think at one point, wasn't this a swappable piece on one of them and it had this strap? They have engineered this differently this time around. Then you poke this through the hole in the cape. Essentially, you're just poking away blindly at the back of that damn thing. You know what would be easier? Because I'm so afraid of breaking these little plastic pieces. How about we do this? Plug it into the back. That's a pretty good grip once you get it on there. And then how about we thread it this way? Ba boom That way I can just plug this damn thing into here, feed this through, and then plug that together. Okay, that's a bit more secure. In fact, it's not coming off. I'm glad they improved it a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to get there, there. Oh, there, there, there. And there, because I'm going to take this off. This is supposed to unplug from here. Oh, it unplugs from the chest and then out of that. And I'm plugging this in. I think... I did put this on one of the older ones. I went to articulate it and it popped out because that bandolier pushes out. I'm gonna keep it like that. The other trigger finger hand is for the blaster, but like previous versions, this doesn't actually come out of the holster. You actually unclamp that. Then you just take the empty holster and pin it on. I haven't had a problem with it wanting to just fall off. Then it comes with a regular blaster. Nice little sculptural detail to it. And uh, it's not pink. Takes some turning and twisting, but it does go in the hand nicely. The Beskar spear is awesome. It's just a silver rod with a spearhead on the end. Can't remember if I've gotten an official one. Oh, well, maybe the model kit. Whoa, that's way too tight. Let's open that up a little bit. 
Hopefully it stays open. I give you this Beskar screwdriver. Yeah, I figured that'll work back a little bit, but at least I can get the spear in it now. Ooh. Let's see if I can figure this out. They say just put it on the belt. Oh, that's actually pretty solid. Rotates a little bit. I'm sure you could knock it off if you get crazy. I think the cape works against it more than anything. Oh, I bet it angles out too to avoid the jetpack. And again, we've seen this before. It's all in Beskar silver. It only goes one way. You're not going to put it this way. Well, you may want to, but you can't. That's solid. It stays on. But this cape, it doesn't want to do much once I get it on there. Jetpack? Me? No, sir. Yeah, it doesn't really want to get out of the way. Hmm. The cut is too far down if you want to use that. That's a Mr. Sinister going on. Those pop out. And there's two sets of boosters with blasts coming out of them. Two different size pegs. I'm not quite sure why they made it to where you have to put one on one side. Just did it backwards after talking about it. On top of that, they're keyed, so you have to turn them a certain way before they'll go in. Still though, that looks fantastic. <laughs> there's also this whistling bird effect. I love it. It has the you simply pop off the rocket on his left gauntlet and that just plugs into those holes. <laughs> and then lastly, as far as weapons go, these come off the belt. You know, if you want to place those charges somewhere. <laughs> but given their size and that it leaves just a little peg right there, I will probably never use those. Another option part is the removable head it comes off at the neck and you can put unmasked Din Djarin on there. This is actually not too bad, especially compared to Boba Fett. Skin tones may be slightly light, but hey, as long as the lightness is there and a little mustache and the hairline looks good and the eyes are straight. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. And then finally, there is Grogu. I really like this compared to the first one. Sure, they took away a bunch of articulation, but this first one is an absolute nightmare under the robes. This is good enough for me at this size. It just has a swivel at the arm and then a swivel at the head. But what I didn't even realize is that you can pull the head and collar piece off. That plugs into the satchel and Look at that. He's poking his head out, looking around at the world as Mandalorian's carrying him around. It's plastic, so it's not laying perfectly on the body, but the effect. I like that. And then you're left with this. Hotwise Mando stands at about five and seven eighths, which as expected is consistent with the previous Mandalorian and looks good with the SH Figure Arts Boba Fett, who I realized after the review shouldn't have this full skirt thing. It should just have a sash right here. I'm going to work on that at some point. But he is smaller than the Hasbro Black Series Mandalorian and the Metacom Moffex Mandalorian. I think I still like it the best. It actually looks like there's a dude inside that armor. And then Grogu is about one and a quarter, one and three eighths to the top of... Oh, sorry, little guy. And at this point we have mini uh, baby Yoda to choose from. This is the, oh, I can't remember where I got this. It was with a little Din Djarin with speeder or something. This is the Moffex. This is the first SH Figure Arts and this is the Black Series. And let's see if we can get this neck peg switched out. Okay, I popped this off by hand, but past experience tells me I need to heat this up to pop it the rest of the way. Then I'm gonna replace it with a John Walker Customs neck extender which would give it about that much. Just brings it up a little bit, gets his head up, gives him more of a neck, which in turn gives you more movement. Looking down, looking up. You know what, I forgot to show that during articulation. Tilt. What the hell just happened there? I've never had one come out of socket. Yeah, it's like, this is really soft. And I went to turn it. Well, shit, it doesn't want to turn inside there. That just peels right off. I've even put some silicone in there and I cannot get that thing to loosen up. I've never noticed that it's designed like that, that it's smooth on one side, unless this is actually part of the joint. This is actually a harder piece that's part of the pin that's holding the bicep swivel together. It goes on and I can rotate it in and out, but any time I try to rotate the arm, it just pops right off. What the fuck? So at the end of the day, <sighs> What a damn shame this figure is. And I can already hear some of you. You like figure arts. That maybe figure arts can do no wrong in your eyes. You gotta admit the arm falling off is not a great look for an $85 action figure. I get it, that may not be a widespread problem, but it was a problem with mine. And that's all I've got to go on. Which sucks because even though, well, okay, there is quite a few things wrong with this. I was gonna say, I like the look of it standing there, but I can't use the jetpack because of the cape and the knee pad falls off when I try to bend the leg. I can glue that and I will, but still, swapping out the hands, the gauntlet pieces like to pop off. The bad just outweighs the good. 
again. This thing is not fun. And that's a big part of it for me. The fun. When I'm taking pictures, when I'm posing, when I'm putting it on the shelf, when I'm looking at it, gazing at it. And this is a lot of work, a lot of popping off. And what's worse is this is the third time I've been in this rodeo. I still think Mafex takes it for me. Hell, Black Series may be better than this in my eyes. I just heard some heads explode. Calm down. So if you enjoyed this review and even if you didn't comment, like, subscribe, much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com, wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Look, I was hoping that this would redeem it for me. I, I didn't, well, at least I don't remember having a big problem with the previous Beskar version. I remember really not liking that first version. So I was hoping this would take the good points, do away with the bad, and give me a good season two Mandalorian and 